Hey, Aaron Dabolo. I have a new script out. It's called the Debris Maker. It lets you procedurally create geometry uh, for 3D Studio Max. Grass, twigs, rocks, broken wood, boards, planks, metal, scrap metal, all sorts of things. Uh, you can download it for free at debrismaker.aarondabolo.com or find the script spot listing as well. Uh, once you've downloaded, let's continue on with the video. Once you've downloaded the MCP file, you can simply drag it into your viewport to start the installer. From here, you can install, uninstall, and check for newer versions. Also, you have the option to make a main menu item. Let's go ahead and install. Once it's successfully installed, you'll be prompted, and the script itself will start. You'll have a menu item up here that you can use to launch the Debris Maker, and if you enter your customized menu, and go to the Toolbars tab, you can add the Debris Maker to your main toolbar. All of these will launch the script. Some things you can do once it's installed are check online for more modules, or request a feature or report a bug, as well as get this online help. Alright, let's move on to our first module. Starting with brick, you'll see that we have three different varieties of brick that we can build. Also, low and high poly versions. If we click generate right off the bat, you'll see we get a pile of bricks at a reasonable amount of detail. And going to the high poly result, you can see it takes a little longer, but we'll get more detailed bricks. We can also stack our bricks. So let's switch to mason bricks and tell it to build a masonry wall. And we can pick a many different types of bonds, say how wide and how tall we want our wall to be, how many unique bricks we want in it, and click Generate. You can see that it's built us our wall. You can also increase the gap and other features as well. The grass module. What do you know? It makes grass. You've got your tufts, number of blades per tuft, and different types of grass that you'd like to make. So yeah, here we go. We've made a bunch of different tufts of grass, and these are actually made off of using the hair and fur modifier. So you can control additional attributes on these if you'd like, style them, change attributes, or you can do that through here and choose different types of grass. You can add animation to these and save them out as a XMesh or V-Ray Mesh proxy sequence and use that to populate your scene. Next is my favorite, the crystal module. Here you can generate crystals as particles or as a mesh. For starting out, you can see it has created a single crystal piece of geometry. You can generate multiples of these and use them as scatter objects, or you could grow them on a surface. By selecting surface and generating your crystals, they will grow off of the selected object. If you choose to leave this as particles and then do the generation, and here you can see it's grown some stuff on the teapot. If we enter the particle view, we have access to the events that created the crystals. We can turn them off individually. And you can change their parameters to whatever you'd like. And now you've grown crystals on your object. The Meteorites module makes meteors that are uh, pretty high poly, um, that are cratered and pitted, like so. You can get pretty close to them, they have a lot of detail, but um, they are pretty dense. So what you can do for these is um, choose to optimize the result, and you can choose exactly how much you'd like to do that. And you'll get something that looks about the same but is a lot lower poly count. You can even go lower, and that's what you can get away with. All right, don't give me a hard time on this one. I use it all the time, actually. Uh, we got pigeons. It's a great way to add a little bit of scale to your scene. Put some of these in the background. Uh, it's an extra added motion element, and uh, this is all particles, so you can edit it however you'd like. With the River Stones module, you can create smooth stones with uh, pitting, banding, and uh, irregular shapes on them to make it look like they've been eroded by water. Also, if you want, you can use uh, the chipping feature 
to break off pieces of them and make them seem more irregular, as you can see here. With the sandstone module, you can make rocks that look like they are limestone, with different numbers of facets on their edges and other features. Like many of the types of debris, if you're not optimizing the result, you can actually edit the stack to increase the detail level or make any other change that you'd be interested in. The obsidian module creates pieces of volcanic glass. These two can be optimized if you'd like a lower poly result. The corrugated metal module makes sheets of metal like what you would find in a junkyard or strewn around after a tornado has come through. This will generate sheets of metal that have slices, are irregularly shaped, and have rust holes in them, and are then deformed to make them look like they've been beat up. Here you can see some of the slicing and the holes. The gemstones module, while not obeying any specific cut, creates faceted pieces of geometry that can look like little jewels. Also, these are useful for populating a scene with small details or flecks that need to be very low poly. The twigs module, you can generate small sticks uh, or branches for whatever you'd like. If you enable the branching option, you'll get sticks that have more detail. And here we go. The gravel module. Not much to say about this one. It just makes little pieces of geometry that can serve uh, as little pieces of rubble or uh, rock to populate your scenes. They're uh, very low poly, so they should be easy to have lots of them. The leaves module lets you create leaves, uh, surprisingly enough. Different species, different types of destruction, and different resolutions. Here you can see they've got twisting, um, tearing, and other deformations with various types of species leaves. Alright, logs. Honestly, this one's kind of uh, unusual. It just makes cut wood logs. You can uh, stack them like so. It's um, yeah, just it's just another module for the debris maker. With the planks module, you can generate pieces of wood that are both broken, like so, or whole. With these, you could populate a boardwalk, or make a bunch of driftwood, or just create debris from a tornado. The shrapnel module will let you create little pieces of metal that would come out of any type of mechanical explosion, or as additional little pieces to litter a scene. They can be generated with holes, without, and with varying types of tearing. The slate module lets you create layered rock that looks like slate or shale. You can change many values on this and optimize them just like many of the others. Next up we've got snowflakes and it does just what it says and that's it. Just makes snowflakes. With the splinters module you get just that. A bunch of splinters. These can be used uh, in explosions or whatever. I think you get the idea by now. Ah, you made it to the end. All right, uh, now I need something from you. Uh, if you have any ideas for more debris modules or any features added to ones that are already there, or if you find any bugs, can you report them to the Debris Maker forum that will be listed here, uh, or leave a comment or email me. Um, and if you like the script or you, you find it useful, uh, share it around and stay subscribed for more. Thanks.